I will be happy. And I know some of us want to win that lotto mark so much that, you know, we want to win it. Because we want to build a big facility for the Ottawa church that Ottawa can go, right? We tell ourselves, if I win it, the first thing, I'm going to build this building. I'm going to sponsor so many poor people in the world. There will be no hunger in the world anymore when I win that 10 million, right? You know, a lot of us sometimes wait for extraordinary circumstances to do good. We cannot wait for extraordinary circumstances to do good. We have to use ordinary circumstances. You know, we sit down here this morning, we have different challenges. And sometimes I say to us, it's all about perspective. Because the problem that you think you have, there's somebody in this room that will wish to have that problem. <laughs> because your problem is nothing compared to what some people are going through. You know, Jesus wants us to serve and to give. If you have your Bible, turn with me to 2 Corinthians. I'm going to read from chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, in verse 3, it says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. Amen? You know, God comforts us so that we can comfort others. In Acts 20:35. You know, she talked about the examples of Jesus helping and where he says it is more blessed to give than to receive. And our responsibility as, as Christians is to take care of the helpless and the needy. The reason we're comforted, the reason that you have that which you have, the reason that God has blessed you with whatever it is, is so that you can bless others and comfort them. And I tell you, when you comfort other people, you'll be joyful. You know, I don't know who it was last, it was last year, you know, that preached on this pulpit, and this particular scripture was used. And I got convicted about, you know, comfort. And, and usually when I go home, I, I ref go back to the message and I say, what is it from today's message that I can apply in my life this week? just to help me. Because it's so easy. I'm getting old. I listen to a message. I'm fired up and I'm challenged and convicted at the moment. And then I get home, ask me what the message, I struggle to remember what it was, right? So I try to go back so that I can, if there's only one thing that I can do differently that week from the message, praise God. And so I go home and, you know, I live in a condo downtown, uh, underground parking, uh, we have a hose where we can wash our cars underneath. So I wash my car, you know, I like it to be clean, you know. Um, so I, I got home after service that day and I got down, went to wash my car. And as I was finishing and I was pulling in, uh, there was this elderly couple that I pulled in. And we all came out at the same time walking up. And he goes, oh, that was uh, some clean wash there. And uh, you got a lot of puddle of water. And I said, well, when you wash a car, there should be a puddle of water. And then we laughed. It was an older man. And he, does, he doesn't live there, but he came to visit his granddaughter who lives in that building. And the granddaughter came downstairs to meet them. I think they brought some things for her. And, you know, really old. I don't know his age. I'll probably put him in his 80s or 90s. But he was surprised that he still drove with his wife, elderly. And he, he, he was hunched, you know, as the, he walked up, right? And uh, we got into the elevator, and they got down before me. I live on the upper floor. And as they were getting down, I heard him say to his wife, I could do with a car wash. <laughs> right? So I went up to my unit, and I thought about it. His car was really dirty. It was a SUV. It was dirty. You know, and I look at this man. This man is... So I go to my unit. I'm going to go wash this man's car. So I pick up my pocket again. 
And then there's that conflicting, I don't know if you get it, there's that conflicting voice that says, ah, come on, what's your problem? <laughs> you know, and that voice, I'm like, ah, come on, you know. Yeah, you don't know if it's Donald Trump's family, you don't know if it's, yeah. I'm like, you know, I just, right now, that's what the Spirit tells me, I'm going to go do it. So I went, I took my bucket down, his car was parked at the other, I pulled the hose as far as I could go, did the back, took my bucket, put water in the bucket, went to the front where the hose couldn't get to, washed it, right? And I was doing it so quickly because I didn't want him to see me. I didn't want him to come back and see me. I wanted to do it. No, nope, I didn't want to thank you. If you know what I mean. I didn't want an appreciate. I didn't want to, I didn't even want him to know who did it. Because I knew that was a desire, that was a wish. So I washed the car and I was going out in the evening to go do my groceries. And as I came down, the car was there. You know, there was some spots of water there. I brought my rag, you know, my clothes. I cleaned it up again. It was shining. You know what? I felt good. I felt good. That evening, I spoke with my daughter. And how was it, Dad? And I, and I shared this with her. And she goes, oh, <laughs> that's my daughter for you, right? Oh. And I said, you know what? Honestly, that's the highlight of my day. Because right now, I feel fulfilled. I feel joyful. You know, brothers and sisters, uh, for us to walk like Jesus, we must give. And we must give not necessarily to get back. You know, there's this cheesiness going around about random act of kindness. Somebody drives to a Tim Hortons drive through and then pays for the car behind. I'm like, yeah, that's great. But you know what? When I drive to Tim Hortons drive through, I have so much change in my car to buy tea or whatever that I want to get rid of. So you drive in front of me and pay for my coffee, that's great. But I don't know if that's what I'm looking for. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, somebody that can repay you, somebody who really needs it. And I know in our fellowship, we have brothers and sisters, we have people who need encouragement, if it's just encouragement. Somebody who hasn't come to be, he was not in church today. And how many times do we assume that they're not in church because they've gone for March break? Or they're not in church because, you know, fill in the blank. Versus us picking up the phone to encourage them and find out how they're doing. Amen? Second point, quickly, worry. Do not let worry steal our joy, amen? You know, at different stages in our lives, we're consumed by worry. You know, whether it's our bills, our children, the future, retirement, getting married, remaining married, our health, you know, um, death. We worry about all these things. But the truth and reality is that when we worry, we waste energy or something that may never happen. You know, when we consume ourselves with worry, our joy is robbed. If you turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 6, it's a very popular passage. We know it. Some of us can recite it without even looking at it in verse 25. I'm going to read down quickly. Matthew chapter 6 in verse 25. It says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in brands, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of those. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith, so do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? 
Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Each day has, today has enough trouble of its own. So why do we pack on the things that we have no control over? You know, if you're like me, something happens and I'm, I do a lot of analysis in my head. That's what worries are you already thinking, what am I going to do here? You know, things bother me a lot, right? But this passage, Jesus is saying to us, we cannot worry about things that we don't have control over. Because today's trouble is enough for today. I put it to you that worry is inevitable in human life. How we deal with it is what determines our joy level. You know, there are practical ways and there's also spiritual ways. Some things will come our way that we have to be practical and we move on. You know, I just came back from a trip this week, you know, and I was coming back. I was in Kitchener for two days and Wednesday morning, I was flying back to, uh, to Ottawa from Toronto through Pearson. And that weekend, I said to my wife, you know, I need you to help me prepare, you know, a bowl of soup that I'm going to take with me, you know, and this uh, stew, Nigerian, African, is not just soup with uh, noodles. No, no, no. If you've been to Fumi's restaurant, you know what I'm talking about. There's goat, there's goat meat, there's cow meat, there's tribes, there's chicken, as you know, it's all well done. And last me, so my wife did all this work and put it, and you know, you can't travel with liquid at the airport, right? So the night before my trip, I got it frozen. So I was frozen. And I got it to the airport and you know, packed the security and no, oh, I just scanned it and the lady goes, sorry sir, you know, I called the guy, the guy goes, you can't take it. I'm like, buddy, I have to take this with me. He goes, no, no, I said, please, I'm begging you. Like, I'm not, I'm begging you, this has to go with me to order. No, no, no. I was like, you know, you know. I said, it's meat, it's, it's frozen. He says, yeah, but it's ice. I said, yeah, but it's a one hour flight. It's not going to melt. And the guy goes, listen, I'm going to lose my job. So, what, so I said, what do we do? He says, you've got to go check it in. Jeez, my flight is like, you have to go check it in or you just give it to us. Give it to you? I looked at this stuff, man. If you have to buy this stuff in the restaurant, it probably cost you like $40, $50, right, in the restaurant. And I said to myself, you know, I'm going to check in 25 bucks. But it's not even the money. Like, I think about the time, the energy, and the love my wife put in getting this. That is priceless. It's priceless. I'm like, no. Okay. We'll go check in. But my time, the guy goes, don't worry. I'll follow you. I'll make sure that you don't go through the lineup again when you come back. So I went in, scanned my, my barcode, boop, 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 checked it in, you know, I'll pay $25. He didn't ask me for anything. I just tagged it, threw it in, and then he just went. And I came back to the line. And as I go back to the line, I go, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. You know, I just, and I waved to the lady. She saw me. She go, yeah, yeah, come, come, come. All of a sudden, I become a VIP. And, every, and everybody's wondering, who is this guy? And I just, you know. Just whistle past everybody. They, don't, I mean, they, didn't, they, were, they were not there the first time, right? So these guys, all of a sudden, I become a, you know, Obama's younger brother now. Like, just VIP, poop, poop, past the line, security, gone. And I said, hmm, there's a lesson here. Practical, just practical, do it. And guess what that did to me? I was hoping to pay $25 to check in, right? My suitcase. Then I realized I didn't pay anything. I am a prestige member of Air Canada without even knowing it from all my flying that entitles me to free two suitcases checked in for free. <laughs> so here was a situation that turned into a blessing that I didn't even realize I had it. I didn't realize I had it. I'm like, oh, awesome. Thank God for this soup now, all right? <laughs> Thank God, guys. 
thank you for not allowing me to take that stuff past because now you just, you know, let me know what I didn't realize, right? We've got to be practical sometimes, you know, when we're faced with situations. That's the reality. But the most important part, brothers and sisters, I said to you, we have to do things the way Jesus would do them. Amen? You know, if you turn to Philippians chapter 4, in verse 6, when you are faced with a situation that leads you to worry, things that you have no control over, how does Jesus want you to address it? In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. God wants us to present our requests by way of prayers and petition. You know, when things come our way that is beyond us, God wants us to pray. To pray and to petition. To petition means to put forth, right? Some of you are, work for the government here. You know what petition is all about, right? You write, you write signatures. You get gather all signatures for people to get, get this thing gone through. God says, by prayer and petition, come to me. In Hebrews chapter 5, 7, don't go there, you know. Um, the Bible talks about how during Jesus' time on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions to God who could answer him, right? You know, think about this morning when you're coming to church. How many of you were worried that we're not going to have a public address system and audio up? We didn't think about that, right? And by the way, I want us to say thank you to these guys that do a good job Sunday in, Sunday out, right? Alex and his crew, you know? We just come in and everything is working and it's all set, right? How many people thought about coming to church this morning and the quartet will not be here. We never worry about it, right? But we come here and it's singing. And again, big round of applause for our quartet for the job that they do every Sunday. We don't think about it. And yet God says, come to me. Just give it to me. Pray. This is the one time that we have an opportunity to delegate to God. If you work in a position where you have a delegation as part of your job where you can delegate something to somebody to get it done, give it to them, they do it, it's done. God says, give it to me. This is the one time you delegate up. Typically, delegation is down. You delegate up. Say, God says, just leave it with me. Pray about it and leave it with me and move on. Has anybody here in the last one year traveled by air? Flown? Fly, yeah. Okay. When you were about to board the aircraft, did you walk to the pilot to say, can you show me your credentials and how that you will show me? Right? You had faith and confidence that this guy is going to get you where you're going to go. You walked in, you sat and you're just looking at the time, right? So if we have so much confidence in the pilot, who God created, how come we doubt when we pray? We pray. And we're not too sure, and we go, and, and then it keeps going on in our head. Because just pray, leave it with me, and move on. That's God, what God wants us from us. Amen? Because when we can take our worries away, um, God surely blesses us, and our work with Jesus will be complete. I apologize, I've used a lot of personal stories this morning, but I have one more for you. Because for me, you know, when victories happen for me, it builds up my conviction, it builds up my faith. You know, this week, I just told the same week, this same week, I was in Kitchener, and like things worry, get, get to me easily. You know, I, I checked out of, I was going to check out of the hotel uh, Tuesday morning, I finished, we're going to go back for another full day of meeting, and as I finished praying, you know, my quiet time, and as God will have it, my quiet time for that morning was, you know, from the series, 30-day series I'm doing, it was about Matthew 6, 25. Prayer, petition, pray, and leave it with God. And I just finished it. 
Then I got up, put on the light in the room. You know, you, check out of the, you wake up to check out in the hotel. You look under the door. They've already slipped their bill there, right? So I saw it. I picked it up. And I went through it. I had had dinner the night before. And they put the amount on the bill. They have a restaurant on the side. Well, if you work in my organization, you're not allowed on business trip to have alcohol, right? So I didn't have alcohol, but they want to see the breakdown of the bill. So I didn't take it at the restaurant. I'm like, holy, how am I going to do this now? I don't have the breakdown. And I'm already pulling my hair. So how am I going to do this? What am I going to do? This restaurant will probably open at 11. Then I said, wait a minute. I just did a quiet time about worrying. <laughs> you know what I did? I went on my knees and I prayed about it. God, this is what I want. Make it easy. Whatever I need to do. Got ready, got myself ready for the day, and I was checking out of the hotel. I went down and I said, hey, you know, there's a, a bill. There's an amount on this bill. When do you, does the restaurant open? I need to come back and get a breakdown when I'm leaving. The guy goes, ah, I can get it for you. Went on the system, printed it with a whole breakdown. I'm like, ah. Oh. I've spent 30 minutes worrying and disturbing myself. You know, and that's, you know, something brothers and sisters will go to learn to pray and to leave it in God's hands. You know, we're going to wrap up. The, I'm going to be wrapping up right now. And as I do, we're going to have the communion. But before then, have a small video, one minute video I'd like us to watch, you know, and it, it's something that encouraged me. And I hope it does encourage you. Can I ask brothers at the back if you can just switch off the light there? And hopefully we can get it working. So my question to you today is, what do you practice every day? What do you practice? Because what you practice, you will get good at. What do you practice? Do you practice joy in your life? Do you practice peace in your life? Do you practice happiness in your life? Or do you practice a lot of complaining? Because if you complain, you will get very good at it. And you will get so good at it that you will find fault with everything. Even when there's no fault that a layman cannot see, you, being an expert, will see it. What do you practice? Do you practice anger? Because if you practice anger, you will get very good at it. And you will get so good at it that the most trivial you'll think. Trivial thing will make you angry. Like sitting in an airplane and watching the sea cross from you somehow looks better than the one you've been given. And that is so unfair of the airlines. What do you practice? Do you practice being worried? Because if you practice being worried, you will get very good at it. And you will get so good at it that everything will worry you, including the buffalo you don't have. <laughs> so I propose, if this is true that it's a question of practice, then I propose you practice joy. Amen. I propose that we practice joy. Amen. Uh, we're going to take up the communion. Uh, let's bow and pray. Our God in heaven, thank you so much uh, for an opportunity to come together this morning to worship you and to remind ourselves about the importance of journey with Jesus. That as we journey with Jesus, that we journey in joy. And as we do that, um, we remember the example of Jesus, his sacrifice on the cross for us. How that comforts us every day and how we need to comfort others and to give, to help the needy so that we can experience true joy. Uh, to remember his promise to us that he will take care of every of our needs through his Father and you, our God. Not to worry about what we eat or drink about tomorrow. Because tomorrow has enough trouble of its own. 
that will practice joy that comes from trusting in you. I pray this morning that our hearts will be tuned to you and as we take the bread that symbolizes his broken body and the juice that symbolizes his uh, blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary, that truly our joy will be complete in the trust and the walk with Jesus Christ. I pray all this in his name. Amen.